Okay, and up next, let's talk about how we can set up one state value for multiple inputs. And before we begin, let me just stress something. It's not something that you have to do if you have multiple inputs, so it's not a requirement. However, you'll see this quite often, and therefore I think it's important that you know how to set it up and basically the logic behind it. Also, during this video, we'll heavily rely on dynamic object keys. And if you need to jog your memory on that, please utilize this JS Nuggets video. So first we want to navigate to app JSX. We want to make sure that we're sitting in the 03 multiple inputs. And then let's navigate to the file. So in here, we want to set up one state value, which is going to represent all of the inputs. So at the moment, notice, instead of just name and email, I also have the password. So instead of setting up three state values, I'll set up one. How we can do that? Well, we can create that state value as an object, correct? So let's go with use state. This is going to be my object and I just need to come up with the properties. Now before we do that, why don't we also come up with a name? So in my case, that is going to be user and set user. So that is going to be my set function. So as you can see, nothing changes. That part still stays the same the difference right now is that we'll have an object and basically each input, we can set it up as a property in here. So we'll have name, I'll also have the email, and I'll also have the password. And as far as my default values, they will be empty string. If you want to go with some different value, of course, that is totally up to you. So now I have the user. And now let's think about it. In order to set up the input, we will have to have a function, correct? So why don't we create that? And the beauty here is that we can use only one function. Since we have only one state value as an object, we can also set up only one function. So I can say handle change. And hopefully you see that it kind of saves us a little bit of time if we have multiple inputs. So again, we only have one state value and we'll only have one function. So that's basically the benefit of such approach. And now once I have the function, let's not worry about any logic in here. I will navigate to all of the inputs and here's what we want to do. We want to set up the value. However, in this case, it's not equal to the state value. It is equal to a state value, which is a user and then dot and then the property. And in this case, of course, it is name. And as far as the function, well, we go here with on change, and we set it equal to our handle change. And effectively, we want to repeat that for all of the inputs. Again, we have name, email, as well as the password. So let's change it here to email. And let me grab this one more time, and copy and paste. So of course, now the state value is going to be a password. All right, awesome. Now let's decide how we can access the actual value. Because if I'm going to go over here, if I'm going to say E, and first, let's just log E dot target and value, you'll see that everything is correct. But we don't know which input we're referencing here as far as the target again, let me remove this one. And then notice, yeah, everything is awesome. I mean, I can see whatever letters I'm typing. And of course, the reason why we don't see anything in the form is because we're not updating anything. So the state values stay empty. However, the big problem here is that I don't know which input am I typing here. So yeah, I have s but what is it name, email, password, and therefore we need to use the name attribute. Remember at the very, very beginning of this section, I covered that we can also access the event dot target dot name. And of course, that needs to be here in the input as well. And therefore, I'm going to go here with name, and I'll set it equal to name. Why? Well, because that's my state value, basically. So this is always the funny one when you show in the example, because it's like name equals to name. Yeah, that's effectively my property. Now, it's probably going to make more sense here 
with an email because now name will be equal to email and you guessed it correctly we need to do the same thing for the password so this is a must if you have such setup where you have one state value and it's an object yes you will need to use this type of approach you'll definitely need the name as you saw before when we had two inputs and we used straight up functions the state functions you don't have to do that i mean you can always add the name but it's not a requirement in this case since we have one function yeah this is what we need to do so let's go here with log and let's say event.target and yes this will reference basically whatever input the user is typing in so notice, this is name and then this is the value the same is going to be for email and you guessed it for the password again we see nothing yet in a browser because we're not updating but this is already an awesome start so we have the name and we have the value so here's what we want to do we want to take this name and we want to update that specific property here in the object with what with this value how we can do that well this is the interesting part we need to use the following logic first of all we go with set user so that's our set function then remember we have multiple values so i cannot simply go with name and then whatever this is going to effectively remove these two if i use such approach so that's not going to work what we can do solution is dot 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 and then user so essentially i want to spread out again all of the existing values first because i'll be overriding only one at a time right i'll be typing in one input at a time and after that we want to dynamically update the property in a state and set it equal to value so first let me set up the code and then i'll try to explain as best as i can because again this is something that pops up quite often in the course q a where i'm going to go with these square brackets i'll pass in event dot target dot name and please keep in mind that this value will be either name email or password in this case so of course if you have 15 of them then it's going to be one of those 15. so this will reference whatever we have here in the name and what happens it will access dynamically this property in the object that's why it's so important that they are the same that essentially you have the properties in the object and they match exactly what you have over here because otherwise if this value for example is names and you'll try to set it in the object it's not going to work so make sure that they match exactly whatever you have in the object so we are accessing dynamically this property and we'll set it equal to what well, we have here the value right so we'll go with event dot target and then dot value let me save and like i promised i will come back to this one don't worry and now let's go over here and notice we nicely type and i still have those logs i don't think i need them let me navigate to the big browser and let's see we should see the state value as well looks like i need to refresh here as far as vite let me try multiple inputs notice so now my state is an object and as i'm typing i'm actually providing values over here for the name for the email and password and like i said yeah this triggers a bunch of questions in course q a so as far as my explanation well let's think about it if i'm gonna go over here and if i'm gonna just hard code one of the properties if i'll say name like so in any input i'm going to type i'll be just updating the name so let's try this one out notice i can save over here and basically notice how it's essentially just typing a value over here even though we're typing in this input and the reason why we see nothing in these ones well because these ones are still empty correct so even though i'm typing in the correct input as far as the value it's showing up here in a name because i'm hard coding here and the same is going to work for password the email and all that that's why we need to set this one dynamic so this will be dynamic depending on what depending what we have here so if it's name then this will dynamically access the property in the object that is name 
if it's email, then it's email. Hopefully you see where I'm going with this. And that's why we go here with event, target, and name. Now, of course, if you have already some experience with dynamic object keys, then this should look very familiar. Again, the reason for that is because we have multiple properties, we have multiple inputs, but we have one function. And therefore, every time the user types something in one of the inputs, I want to check two things. Not only I want to get the value, but I also want to get the property. And I want to access that property. And I want to set it equal to whatever value I have in the input. And as far as the handle submit, let's set it up here. Let's say on submit in this case, let's come up with the function name and I'll submit. And you know what, I think I'm just going to copy and paste, I think it's going to be faster. So handle not change. We're looking for submit. We do want to get the object, we do want to prevent the default. And instead of setting the user, I simply want to log it. And again, the only gotcha right now is that it's a state value. So once I type here, and of course, since this is an email field, we will have to add the at one. And let's go with mail.com and check it out. The moment I press submit, now I have the object in the console. So essentially, rest of the logic is the same. Whatever you want to do after that. So yes, of course, you'll check for empty values. Then you'll set up some kind of functionality. And a common approach is then to clear the values. So this doesn't change. The only difference that right now we have an object.